ජයගමු ශ්‍රී ලංකා ජූනි 22 සහ 23 අම්පාර HM වීරසිංහ ක්‍රීඩාංගණයේදී ජනාධිපතිතුමා the honorable speaker you have read out the decision on the gender equality bill yes the determination of the supreme court on the gender equality bill that's right yes so I, it it has been read out by you i just want to raise a point of order that it violates the powers of this house under article 4 of the constitution and we should elect a a point a select committee it uh, i would like to say first and foremost the bill says what is the national policy on gender equality and empowerment of women referred to in this bill at the, at the least it's hard to find out it's not specific as there is no reference in the bill there has been a national policy on women empowerment and gender equality since 2011 these are uh, obligations of the government under uh, uh the sustainable development goals 5 and a number of women's conventions and agreement that uh, we have signed more than that in the case of uh, the kamalavathi and other uh, versus the provincial public service commission one slr 1 uh, national police was deemed within the uh, domain of the cabinet of ministers and parliament is a political matter the supreme court cannot in any way uh, go and make any rulings on this then they are contravening and coming into our area secondly there is a large number of cases which has been given on the question of equality and equality of women there are ratnayaka taranga lakmali versus niroshan abekon and the inspector general of uh, police the it, it re- recognize the dignity and well being of people as a fundamental right then there are the 10 uh, judge bench in sarath jay singh uh, and others we have the view that mere reliance on the text used in a constitution is not sufficient to ascertain the values that are embodied in a constitution or its uh, uh, amendments similarly uh, you have the case where shirani bandar naik judgment in karuna tilaka and jailad di silva and others which says uh, the basic principle governing the concept of equality is to remove unfairness and arbitrary it is profoundly forbids action which denies equality and thereby uh, discriminates and uh, finally they have also ignored the de- determination the special determination on the penal code amendment made by the chief justice in this we are talking of empowering women and ensuring equality for women but according to the goal 5 was sustainable even even other minorities must get uh, the government services without discrimination that anyway follows from the average uh, function uh, duties uh, which have been given to us under fundamental rights so all these uh, powers have been uh, and uh, disregarded in a sense the court has set aside everything and saying that this makes room uh, so in a in a way what they have done is all these have disappeared as if this court has eaten it up all the other judgments so in a way we are they are practicing judicial cannibalism and we are being asked then to accept it which which this house can't how can you overrule a 10 judge bench and how can you overrule the chief justice so that is one area then they are saying that this will allow same sex marriages and gender this thing no it has done nothing to do with it we we can't allow that they are going on this normal section which is put in every law by the legal draft and the ag not by us this law prevails over other laws but this has also been uh, interpreted it's a finally for the court to decide and i think in uh, chamara sampat not our honorable minister but uh, another person and neil liddavela they also referred to the points this has been done by the doctrine of harmonious uh, constructions and the laws of marriage in this country can't be changed by one section more than that they say that the whole of the uh, basically the whole uh, 
Pirivana Education Act can get uh, knocked out by this. I, I don't know on what basis they have done. We have Article 9 which protects Buddhism and I know this act because I'm one of those who drafted it and the minister who implemented it. Uh, it says, Pirivana Adhyapane Paramate Pariyati Patipati Pativedi and Trivida Sasane Arakshava Abivurde Kere Bikshun Vahanselata Unanduak Ethikirima Sadut Mahamugalan Teru Parampur and Pertin Sanka Parapura Avijino Pathwag in Yamasanda Avasha Vinir Tripitakanyani Dharma Garukaba Bikshun Vansela Athar Ethikirima May Okkum this has been defended by this has been taken on by Article 9 and this you think a small provision can change it. I don't think the Supreme Court or the bench that uh, sat is, is even aware of what is Pariyati, Patipati, Pativeda. I think they should go to the uh, temple and learn what this is or to a Pirivena before coming and telling this house. We are aware of what is happening there. We have honorable member of the Sangha also. So the, these rights of what he's saying is that all the rights of the Buddhists can be taken away by one small section. And what, what is going to happen? All the protection for Buddhism has been removed. And the power of this Supreme Court finally has to go back to the 1972 constitution, all of us. Any inherent powers all must be, must be justified by the Constituent Assembly and the 72 constitution which this is built. Therefore, when it comes, the Supreme Court can't rule on, on a bill, they can only advise us on the value. It, it is basically a pre-legislative scrutiny. And what we did in the 78 constitution as one of those involved in this house uh, was that there had been, uh, we transferred the powers of the constitutional court to the Supreme Court to ensure independence of the court is even further uh, strengthened. That's, that's all that uh, we have done, but otherwise in 72, when the first instance came up and T.S. Fernando uh, decided that uh, the two weeks are not mandatory, the House overlooked it and ruled it out. I think honor the Honorable, the former President and Vasudeva Nanakkar were members of the House because these powers of the Supreme Court in all other matters come under justice, but this comes under, certainly this comes from the Parliament. In a sense, unlike the other courts, the Supreme Court is transgender. So that, that is what they fall into. They get from two genders, both from us and uh, under Article 4C and from us under Article 4A. So I, I don't, this, this is really a perverse determination which this House should not follow. And I am going to recommend that a select committee be appointed to go into it. There are no need to summon the judges. I don't think we should go into that. There are enough that can be studied and they can recommend it. Because in uh, and we majority of the members should be appointed by the women's caucus. After all, this concerns women. But what happens is it deprives the majority of this population, the women, of their rights, and it uh, takes away the safeguard of another majority, the Buddhists in the constitution. So we cannot accept it, and this house then has to assert its own rights. Secondly, honourable uh, uh, speaker, there's the matter on which I have to make an announcement, you know, uh, there has been a lot of discussion and heartburn about the burials and what took place during uh, COVID-19. Uh, you know, I was also there. Initially, all countries sort of stopped burials and then uh, it went to the WHO. But in Sri Lanka, we appointed a committee and unfortunately, that committee uh, recommended that we don't allow burial, while WHO took a different view. But then the Supreme Court also upheld the decision of the committee. So the government had to follow that. There was no choice at that stage. But now all this is over. And I, as we've gone through everything, uh, this country requires the... Uh, in this country, any person should have the right to determine whether he is uh, buried or he or she is buried cremated or given to the uh, medical faculty. Therefore, the minister will bring uh, a law which allows the right of uh, burial, right of cremation or gifting your body to the medical uh, institutions. During this time, there were a lot of uh, pain witnessed only 
mainly by the Muslims, but there are also Hindus, Buddhists, I know, and Christians who also like to bury. So they were, we'd like to apologize to them on what has happened. And I hope this house will uh, release, uh, will support the bill that will be presented uh, in, in the house. Uh, thirdly is that we are taking up the finance issues and since I may not be here at that time, I just want to tell the house in regard to the rental income, we are going to have a wealth tax and they, there will be a very high threshold. So 90 or odd percent of the people's houses will not even be, one house will be ex exempt from it, so don't worry, your house is safe. Uh, the, but uh, why, why is it we are going to rental income? No, this was based on rating. Then we came up with a problem. Rates are, uh, belongs to the uh, pro provincial council. So if we go on the rating business, there's a possibility that the court can say that we are, uh, this money belongs to the provincial council. So we want to get it here. So we have used a different formula called rental income. Your income tax belongs to the central government. It's the same. You would generally have used the ratings but to get over the constitutional issue that we have uh, done this, but it's going to have a very high threshold and I don't think the vast majority of the people in this country should even be worried about their house. So that's all, but we will have to get on to wealth tax. I know SJB is very, very worried that their billionaires who are with them will get uh, uh, <laughs> tax, but nevertheless, uh, this, this is the reason for it. Thank you. Channel.